Good morning, YouTube. It's Larson Hicks again. Good to see you here on my channel. It's been a couple days. I was traveling um, on business and just got back late last night and uh, taking a few hours this morning, getting caught up a little bit on work. Still way behind, but thought I'd take a break and uh, record a quick video. Um, one of the things that I'm really interested in is the idea of the household and uh, the ancient idea of the household and um, and how that idea has kind of been lost has been completely lost the the most important book on this in my humble opinion is um, C.R. Wiley's book called um, Man of the House and he's got a follow-up to it called um, The Christian Household and the War for the Cosmos which is great it adds kind of a biblical theological underpinning but I, I, I think the the first book is more is is more the primary um, argument and uh, and is really wonderfully written, um, very helpful. I've 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 read it a bunch of times. I've, I've taken some guys through it, um, and I just want to lay out some of the basic ideas. And this is a theme I'll return to a lot. I've probably already alluded to it, but um, but the basic idea is that the household, as we understand it. Um, historically or as we currently understand it is really just like the place where you go and you sleep and recreate and um, you know, it's the place where you where you go at night after your work's done and this is not at all the ancient idea of the household uh, the word house is the same word the, the word for economics is oikonomikos it's 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 basically household management and so the household was actually uh, the primary basis for um, for trade and for the, the the what we think of as the marketplace was really um, the the household was the basic unit um, and and the idea was that you is that um, and, and the def and and the I think I guess to kind of get to some definitions so um, so the household um, is is a family operation it is a, a productive um, place that mother and father and kids are all uh, working together, engaged in something. Uh, um, the household is an institution um, that has value um, that transfers from generation to generation. Um, we think of an inheritance. Uh, for most of us, that's just the money that's left over after you, you know, liquidate your parents' assets or whatever, um, pay off the nursing home. But really, uh, an inheritance. In the ancient world was something that you were you were sort of coming into especially as a young as a son you were coming into your inheritance as you entered into your working productive age um, and and that's really this model of taking over um, the family operation um, obviously agriculture is the is the paradigm in the ancient world but but it certainly is not limited to agriculture uh, at all and I think that's one of the first like major misunderstandings I think people have of what um, what C.R. Wiley is, is interested in there. The thing that I think is so pivotal and important is I, I was reading C.R. Wiley's book while I was also reading um, Hilaire Belloc's uh, The Servile State and that book um, that book was kind of melting my face uh, because uh, he was kind of laying out this argument that that uh, he was basically trying to define slavery. What is slavery? Um, and really, in his mind, slavery is any economic arrangement where where uh, your options as a person are indigency. You know, basically living out. Uh, uh, you know, on um, without a home, being homeless and jobless because um, you don't have any property and you don't have any means for 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 creating wealth, um, generating money. Um, um, and so your option, uh, a slave's option is either to, to embrace that or to sign on with a household, um, and exchange, um, time, uh, for a subsistence. And, um, and obviously slavery has been done really, really terribly in a lot of places. It's also been done. Okay. You know, it, it, it's, it's been done different ways in different places. So it's not a necessary evil, um, and and the, actually the argument that I would make is that that if 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 we go by that definition, the vast majority of Americans today are slaves. Um, we're really well-fed slaves. We're very free slaves. 
but um, we're exchanging our time, most of our productive hours, um, we're exchanging that for a, a living. And again, it's a good living. Uh, most of us have homes and cars and everything we could possibly need and, and more. Um, but but the point is that we most of us don't own uh, the kind of property that we could turn around and, and, and generate um, income from. And so... So that makes us a slave, essentially. And the the problem I have with it is that um, is 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 well, there's lots of layers to it. Let me light my pipe, and then we'll keep going. So the problem, as I see it, is several layered. Um, one is I think um, building a business, owning a business running a household, being an owner, um, those are require virtue and, and really our school are, are really a school of virtue business, running a business, owning a business, uh, teaches you work, discipline, thrift, um, uh, management, all of these skills that you have to have responsibility. It also forces you to be engaged in your local economy. Um, you start to do commerce with more people. Um, your reputation starts to really matter, um, and the laws, the local laws, start to really matter. Taxes and things like that, regulations. So that's one of the major things that I think is we've lost is that when ninety percent of Americans don't uh, don't own a business or not um, engaged in a in, in productive enterprise uh, outside of a of an employment or uh, i would say slavery kind of model then we're sort of disengaged from that whole lawmaking process we're, we're, we're not we don't really doesn't really affect us we just know that the money shows up in our bank account every week um the other major concern is that um we are no longer free okay um, so this is where slavery is a is a real bad thing or a real danger to a society is when you've got most people are no longer free to speak their mind, to do what they feel is right, um, but are in a situation where they have to do whatever the boss says, um, you're, you're, you're in a bad spot, and especially when you've got a, a what I would call a crony capitalist um, marketplace where... The government and big businesses have now so enmeshed with one another, so colluded with one another that that um, it's hard to tell where one stops and the other begins. And so, um, and so we've we've created we, we're living in a world where um, where yeah, in, in principle um, we're free. Um, we our our system of government was built by independent householders, independent free families who owned their own means of production um, and now is um, and all of that's been captured and centralized and so uh, we now have a society that like really would love maybe to push back on certain things uh, more strongly more and, and, and be more bold but really can't because they don't have the liberty to really um, do that um, so there's a lot of layers to this, um, but I, I'm going to just stop with that basic definition. Um, and, and I'll continue to come back to this. This is something that I think is really, really, really important. And it's something that I'm thinking a lot about, um, um, talking a lot about, planning a lot about. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are just on those basic ideas of slavery and the household. And uh, this will definitely be like part one of, of like 50 probably for me because it's something I love to think about. But I hope you have a great uh, week. Um, I guess it's already Wednesday. It feels like it's Monday to me because I'm, I'm, this is my first day to kind of be back at home doing my normal routine. But um, we'll talk to you again soon. Cheers.